drive, gets inside, leans in, knocked away, it's stolen by Holiday. Now up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! To Curry, way down to bang, bang! It's the tagger! Here's the problem I'm seeing. Zion's gonna want out soon. Here's the thing, I don't think the front office of that organization, of that New Orleans organization, knows what the heck they're doing. What can I say? Mamba out. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Josh Unix, and we are here on our way to the NBA trade deadline. We're on the road to the deadline. We don't have many days left. We only have, what? I know we have, but it's only, it's only 10 days. Not, not including today, only 10 days. So we have about a week left before it really starts heating up. Because that's when the rumors and reports are going to be at its highest. That's when the speculation is going to be cooking up. Oh, buddy. We're going to have some good days ahead of us. So pretty much, guys, we have a week until the rumor is going to cook up, but we have 10 days until the deadline is here. February 9th, mark your calendars. It's a Thursday. I'm going to be so pumped for it. And guys, since the deadline, since the trade on is coming up, I'll be releasing a podcast episode detailing the deadline each day leading up to the 9th. So our whole schedule, my whole schedule is being thrown out the window. I don't care if it's a Wednesday. I don't care if it's a Sunday. I don't care what day it is. A podcast episode is dropping on all of my streaming platforms, YouTube, the site, you name it, and something just fell. That's fine. We are just going to be going at it. We're going to be tackling all the breaking news around the league. It's going to be NBA trade deadline. Palooza. I ain't even kidding with y'all. Let's just be honest. I'm going to jump into this hard. Um, I want to cover everything. So they may not be hour long episodes. They may not be hour 10 hour long episodes. They may not be 50 minute episodes. They can heck even be 30 minutes, 40 minutes. But with the volume of content is going to be coming out from today all the way to not this week, but next week's Thursday. Is going to be absolutely mind blowing. So, guys, get ready for that. A large amount of content about to drop. Do not miss it. Remember, y'all know where to find us on social media Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. All of Courts of Heat. Instagram is Courts of Heat NBA. Long story short, we could not get Courts of Heat because I locked myself out of my own account. So, uh, until I can use my big brain, it is Courts of Heat NBA, but that's just such a more, far more superior account, if you ask me. Uh, but yeah, you got all the different social media platforms. We are there. Remember, YouTube, just put in on desktop or mobile, Courtside Heat, and we are going to pop up. And you'll begin the 2K content, the podcast content, the NBA clips, and all the other goodies locked inside that YouTube channel. So do not miss it. You will be a loser missing out on it. I do not want y'all to be a loser. So go there, subscribe, like, turn notifications, comment. And we got more live streams coming up. I will be releasing those dates very, very soon with the possibility of 2K streams coming to my channel because y'all wanted it. I've been pulling it on YouTube. Get on the get on that action. And yeah. That's all I got. So we got some of those things coming up. So remember, podcast episodes every single day, 8 a.m. Do not miss it. That's the release date. Uh, YouTube, go there. Social media, follow me. If you're not, well, you're already a loser until you follow me. Getting into the episode now. We got not hyping this up. I have some big, big articles I want to discuss. I have things evolving around Fred Van Vliet and the contract he wants. I have some Raptor news that are going to make you really swallow hard in fear. I have Kawhi Leonard news and who he wants to trade for. 
He's given his demands. And I have the Suns potentially trading Chris Paul. This is not a prediction I'm coming up with. No, I'm being serious. The Suns could be trading Chris Paul. So stick around for that. But then the Phoenix Suns have finally listed out their demands for Jay Crowder. I'm going to be recapping the weekend as well. Feature of Miles Turner of the Indian Pacers. I'm going to get to him. But y'all, we're kicking it in. And we're actually going to jump into Miles Turner now. The big man for the Indiana Pacers. And it's this. Him and the Pacers have agreed upon a two-year, $60 million extension as that. So, this extension. So, I, this extension is a very rare extension. And I saw that in many outlets. Many uh, media people, many people are talking about it being a rare. Because how many times do you actually go through that, right? Um... So, it's, it's not a normal extension, as everyone's like, oh, he got $60 million. No, it's his extended of two years for $60 million, but what makes it so unique is that instead of the original money that he's getting, they're adding some more. Because the reason why they signed upon a renegotiation and extension is so that there's this new salary for Indiana that allows them up to ten million to be used before the trade line, which is going to be vital to them if they want to get another piece for this team. For Turner, this allows more money and more stability. I'm just going to say now, with the deal coming out and coming together, I would not expect this team to move him ahead of the trade line. If they were going to trade him, then they would have signed and trade him. So, it's going to be no sign and trade. It was a renegotiation and extension. So, Indy's going to be keeping them. It's going to be a win-win. So, that's that. So, some quick news. And he's only one of three players to sign a contract before the new CBA is agreed upon, if I was reading that correctly. Because I know Robert Covington... And one other player were signing those deals before the new CBA was agreed upon. If I read that correctly. But yeah. So this is a win-win for both sides. You have Miles Turner getting stability. Getting a new contract which he wanted. The Pacers are able to keep him. Are able to keep his production. Especially when healthy. And are able to save themselves a lot of money. Right? It helps. Because Miles Turner is averaging 17.5 points. Seven rebounds, eight rebounds, and one assist per game. Off of 54.4% for the field. Which, for him, and he started his career back in 2015. So, these, this is actually really good improvement. Because he's never been healthy. But, taking that out of consideration, 17.5 points, career high. Minutes being played, almost career high. Just a minute short. Uh, field percentage, career high. Rebounds per game. And you have to go into the point, like point eight, point one, all that stuff. Career high and assist pretty much around the same, but I'll throw into a career high. So it's not that bad. And the, but the last time he played 80 games back in 2016, the last time he played 70 games was back in 2018. And the last time he played 60 games was back in 2019. From 2020 to now, He's played less than 50 games. His se his high in in the season for games was back in 2020 at 47. But he's doing really well for 2022 season, 2022-23, where he's currently playing 43, so he can easily get up to 50 if he's not damaged goods throughout the rest of the season. Now, that's not a negative towards him. It's just been really bad injuries. But when he's healthy... He produces like crazy. So, guys, this is a win-win for the Pacers and for Miles Turner. Pacers are currently 24-28, and 11th in the Eastern Conference, and battling for a playing tournament spot, which is actually not inconceivable. It's actually really possible, even though the Pacers are 1-9 in the last 10. Anyways, this is a win-win for both sides. So, um... We got that covered. 
Which, you knew a deal was going to happen, to be honest. I knew a deal was going to happen. I didn't think they were going to trade him. I know they were fielding offers, but I didn't think that it was going to be anything major. I didn't think that it was going to be something to be like, oh, wow, this is definitely going to happen. I know the Phoenix Suns were in on it. I know the Lakers were in on it. I know a lot of teams were having that speculative, well, what if we got him type of routine. But no, Miles Turner is here, and he's here for the next two seasons. Now, I just want to say this. I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Right now. Because I find this really funny and really dumb. See, you can go down the Hornets route, or you can go down the Bulls route. I don't know why the Bulls are doing this. I know why the Bulls are doing it. But for the Hornets? I think the Hornets are just um, trying to troll. I'm not kidding with y'all. I thought this was a legit joke. I hope these people are joking, but Mason Plumley, the Hornets, actually think they're going to get a first round pick in return for Mason Plumley. Night Giddy. He's having career averages in points, rebounds, and field goal percentage. I'm getting that. And I guess point and minutes per game. But let me tell you what they are. Uh, 12 points, 9 rebounds per game. Why would anyone give up a first round pick for him? And he's 32 years old. It's not a good deal. It's not a good deal. And I think if you look at his contract... To go to his contract, I think he's on an expiring deal. He's close to having an expiring deal. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, he's on an expiring contract. Why in the world would a team give up a first rounder for an expiring guy who is playing like a bomb? Like in the world of big men, like in the world of a center, those are not good stats. To be making nine million and expect to have and be projected at a value of a first round pick. And I know they're reach and I know they're just gonna see if there's a sucker of an NBA team like the Pistons or next I would do it. Hey, and trust me, Dolan or who that idiot is that's running the Knicks as the owner, he would do it. Just like he's trying to get like that face ID stuff in in his arena. He's an idiot. Well he's pretty petty, but whatever. He's just a major loser. That's the only reason why he has friends because he's able to have tons of money and can just buy himself from friends. Not even kidding. You. Like, I hate that dude, but whatever. Um, it was actually really funny. Uh, Mason Plumlee actually has all of this money guaranteed, so he's set for life. Or if he's or if he's spending on all ridiculous stuff. Anyways, I just don't see where the first round pick is coming in at. I don't see it. Am I being a little hypercritical here? No. I'm really not. Like, why would the Suns... I'm sorry, no sense. Why are the Hornets making Mesa Plumlee available for a first round? Do they just want to make themselves feel good? Like, oh, we're actively participating this year. Let's put him available on the trade block for a first round. Let's have this feel-good moment like we're actually doing something. No, you lunatics. You're not doing anything. And if you're valuing this bomb at a first rounder, then y'all are insane and should be fired and put into a mental institution. Why? Because y'all are whack jobs if you think someone's going to pay you a first rounder. And if someone pays you a first rounder for a plumb money who's a bomb, who's 32 years old, who's washed, who should never make more of a million dollars in his career... Okay, that's probably harsh. Maybe less than $10 million in his career, but good on him for making 70 plus million dollars, whatever he's making, in his career earnings. You, that would be insane. Why would you do that? You not give up first round. Like, what do they want next? A guaranteed lottery pick? A top free protected pick? Because they say they have the Holy Grail in Mason Plumley. He's not even good in 2K, even if you buff up him. Buff up his stats and buff him up and just make him this nerfed out, just 
all-out 99 overall. He would still be averaging 12 points a game. That is the type of person. Even if you gave him the all, all good badges and stuff, it wouldn't matter. He would still be averaging 12 points a game. That's how bad Mason Plumlee is. But no, no, make him available for a first rounder. Is that their cute way of just saying he's off limits? Or is it trying to be a feel good moment? Is anyone legit going to pay a first rounder? Probably not. Anyways, I've had my little rage moment. The Hornets, to me, do not make a lot of sense. When have the Hornets ever made a lot of sense to me? They have never. And they never, ever, ever, ever will. Because I don't know why you would fire James Brago, who is having a really good tenure, will end tenure with the Hornets rebuilding because the Hornets were trash. They still are trash. They're trying to rebuild their trash. So you, why would you get rid of a head coach that was trying to help them, that was just loyal to the cause, then MJ scraps them for this guy. And I'm not um, dragging down the new guy, whoever he is. Hold on, who is he? Who is he? Head coach. I'm not trying to drag him down or anything, but Steve Clifford. Huh. Like, he's getting a second chance from uh, Michael Jordan. He was the former... He's the former head coach of the... Sean Hornets. Just why? Just why? I don't understand that. And that's why the Hornets are not going to be anything significant. I actually feel bad for Lamella Ball. And I get, then they're 13 and 36. 15 and 36, everybody. They're 14th in the Eastern Conference. Rehiring Steve Clifford was not the right idea. Getting rid of James Brager was not the right idea. Like, guys, what are we doing here? What's Michael Jordan doing here? Whatever, though. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the horns because I don't have that type of time. That will legit take me several days to figure out what's going on with them and actually put that into a presentation and give it to you guys. And it's actually going to take me five minutes to figure out what everything's wrong with the organization. It would take me another five minutes to figure out what Michael Jordan's doing wrong. And it would take me three days to put all the information I find into a presentation. I'm not even kidding you. This level of stupidity is not even funny anymore. It was funny in the beginning, but it's no longer anymore. It's just a trash organization ran by incompetent people. I swear. I really, really swear. Now. I'm going to change the tone. The Bulls, you can say, well, they're not a really good team. I don't care. There's a difference. The, the, the Bulls are different than the Hornets. The Bulls are in 10th, who are fighting. They're 23 and 26. The Hornets are bust. They're just bums. I'm trying just to pass time. Billy Donovan, our front office and ownership, are trying to make some out of the organization. They've been paying guys. They've been getting the job done. They've been trying to build and build and build and build. But it doesn't help when your guys are injured, like Alonzo Ball, who's not progressing very well. But you're trying to build around, okay, you went after... Alex Crusoe, Nikola Vujovic, Zach Levine got re-signed. DeMar Rosen came here. Petra Williams got drafted. Goran Dragic. Kobe White, maybe you're going to try to sub him out. I'll get to him later. Kobe White, you got Andre Drummond. So you're trying to build. So you can't sit there and tell me the Hornets and the Bulls are the same. And I've heard many arguments for that. And here's my counter-argument for that. Y'all are morons. Y'all don't know basketball, and to say that the Bulls are like the Hornets is the most laughable thing I've ever heard. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just really, really funny that, that people think that way. And why am I bringing this up? It's because if someone tries to make a comparison to me, well, why are the, why are the Hornets getting grilled for putting Mason Plumley up for a first rounder, but oh, we're going to praise the Bulls for, we're not going to ridicule the Bulls for making Alex Crusoe almost untouchable by making him available by the cost of two first rounders. 
Well, that's their kind way of telling teams to kick rocks. So, Alex Caruso is becoming untouchable in trade talks. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach y'all something real quick. And for all the people who have been bringing this up, I'm going to teach y'all something real quick. The Bulls do not want to try with Caruso. Teams are reaching out to the Bulls. The Hornets are putting out Mason Plumley and asking for this back. Teams are asking for Mason Plumley. Especially not that. They would just ask, they would just ask for five hundred thousand dollars. That's all they would ask to get from my uh Mason Plumley. So those are those are the differences. They found value in Alex Caruso, and they're saying the only way we're gonna trade our value player is if you give us two first rounders, two valued, treasured to your chest first rounders. It's not them saying, "Well, we think we got the next go." That this is the only way. No, they're just saying for us to really get rid of him. You're going to have to give us two, up two first rounders. And that's their kind of way of telling teams to kick rocks because they know no one's going to give up two first rounders for him. And that's their way of assuring that, okay, you can ask about them, but that's the price. That's the price. And if you want to play that game, here's the cost. Here's the price. Do you want to go through with it? If you're going to walk down that hall and meet us at a table and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give you this. No, this is the value. So this is is the risk you're taking. Do you want to go in for that? So there's that. There's that, everyone. But yeah, Alex Crusoe's becoming, he's not listed untouchable, but there's a feeling around the league he's becoming untouchable in trade talks because the Bulls aren't apt to get rid of him. Chicago does not want to get rid of them. Because it doesn't want to get rid of them. Simple fact. A very, very simple fact. And I think we all need to understand that. I really, really do believe we all need to understand that. So, as much as I want to be just bringing down the Bulls, because, well, you could say, well, they're not they, they're not performing up to expectations. They have tons of good players. What's happening to them? O okay, um, ever heard of bad luck? Injuries, when your core players don't have stability because of injuries, because of conflicts, because of rough nights, or you just can't gel together and form chemistry, what do you expect? Lonzo Ball, who were the Bulls' starting point guard, their main facilitator, who's gone down with the injury, who hasn't played in eons, what do you expect? You're expecting... Other guards to step up, like Caruso, like Levine, but he's not a but he's not a guard, but he can dish out the ball. He's averaging four assists per game, which for some point guards is a lot. But then you have other guys like Ayo Desmayu. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Ayo Adio Susmo. Wait, huh? Ayo, hold on, I'm going to get this. Ayo Dosumu. Dosumu. Up, Ayo. I don't know, Ayo? Ayo, I say his name, first name's Ayo. You say Ayo, but you combine like Ayo. He's a point guard. He's averaging 27 minutes. I apologize, I'm not, I can't pronounce, I can't pronounce uh, names very well. For people that are long time listeners, you know what I'm talking about. But real quick, um, he's been off on, he's been hot and cold. He's not a starting point guard, but yeah, he's getting point guard minutes. He's getting starting minutes because they're just that spread thin. They're just trying to win, right? Look, the, the Chicago Bulls have just fallen some hard times. They're not a bad team. They've just fallen behind. And they're not out of it. They have a playing tournament spot. So, um, one of these days, not this week because we have to trade it on, but not one of these days, I'm going to have an entire, you know what, the All-Star break. The All-Star break 
mark my word, I'm going to try to have a detailed breakdown of every single team, and I'm going to have multiple episodes running, and that's just how we're going to run it. That's how we're going to be doing it. Understand? That's how we're going to be doing it. I'm going to have, for each day of the All-Star break, maybe with two to three episodes coming out per day, per day, I'm going to have a detailed breakdown of each team to assess where they're at, why they're struggling, why they're succeeding, what they can do to get better, what they can change permanently or temporarily, and all those different things. I'm just going to look at every nook and cranny of that team and just expose them or praise them. But I'm going to evaluate them. That's when I'm going to do it. So mark your day, the uh, all-star break. So there you go. There you go. So, there's my little mini breakdown of the Hornets and Bulls and a very passionate twist. But, in short, that is what's happening with the Hornets and the Bulls, Mesa Plumley and Alex Caruso. Huh, isn't that funny? I was just able to go on a little mini rant. My apologies. But let's just switch it up real quick. Let's switch it up. Let's talk about teams that want to restore their future. That wants to keep the galactic order intact. Let's talk about those teams. Let's start with the Heat. Who actually lost to the um, Hornets. By 5. What was I? 122 to 117. They lost to them. Which I actually can't fathom, but whatever. But yeah, so the Heat. Right now, the Heat prefer not to break up their team ahead of the deadline. But teams continue to call the Heat for Kyle Lowry. But the Heat do not want to break up their team. So they're not looking to move on from Jimmy Buckets. They're not looking to move on from Bam Adebayo. They're not looking to move on from Kyle Lowry, Tyre Hero, or anyone. They're looking just to stay sixth in the East, pretty comfortable, and they just want to keep things rolling. They want to keep their core guys. They want to keep their roster. They they didn't say core guys, but they said roster. They said team. They don't want to get Okel Martin, who's actually been playing very, very well this season. He's averaging 30 minutes per game. With 10 points and 5 rebounds and almost 2 assists. Off of 45% from the field. They don't want to get rid of him. They do not want to try. They don't want to have to exchange anything. They don't want to, they don't want to get rid of him. And they've got a pretty good team. I'm not going to lie. They have a pretty good team. And when everyone's healthy and when everyone's insane can win. Everyone's playing the way they should be. They are undeniably the best team on that court. I, I I honestly do believe that. I really, really do believe that. And I'm not just saying that to say. I'm just saying I, I believe that. So the Heat, they're not looking to break up their team. They want to finish it strong. They're already in the postseason, so there's nothing drastic going on. To where it's like, oh, uh, what, what's happening here, fellas? It would have been different if you're a bottom team, a bottom feeder, and you're trying to make something out of this season. You're like, okay, maybe it's time to move on from pieces. Maybe the entire hero extension was not the best. So maybe let's move on from him. Let's listen to calls. Maybe it's time for 33 year old Jimmy Buckets to leave. Maybe he's just got to go to a different team. Maybe we just gotta try to get more pieces. No, it's none of that. It's none of that. They're not playing for the draft. They're playing for the future of the postseason. And that postseason is coming very, very fast for them. The All Star break is coming very, very fast for them. They're sixth in the East. They're 20 and 23. And by my math, that's 51 games. And I'm just gonna count it. Yeah, 51 games. Or there's only 82, so that means there's 31 games left. They don't want to make any big moves. So why force it? Why 
force something that doesn't need to be forced. It's like, you don't need to fix something that doesn't need fixed. The truest statement I've ever heard in my life. Ever heard in my life. I truly do believe that. And so do the heat. Now, and this makes sense to me for this our team, but their situation is a little bit different. Their situation is different for the for them and their season and their short term and long term goals. It's different than what it was for the Heat. While the Heat have a good reason for not wanting to break up their nucleus, for not them wanting to break up their entire team and dismantle and try to fit circles into squares and squares in the pegs, holes, whatever those kids' toys are, for like uh, toddlers or preteens. I have no idea. Never mind. So, the Wizards aren't ready to blow up their roster just yet, as they want to keep their core players together, which would be Kyle Kuzma, Brad Beal, and Chris Alporzingas. Look, I can understand that and I can respect that. And this, t I feel bad for the Wizards, man. I, I really do. They're ninth right now, so they're 23 and 26. They have a playing spot. But this team wants to win. They gave money to John Wall and Brad Beal. They're paying guys. They were making big time contracts, big time moves. They were just trying to get this team healthy. They saw KCP could have been something. They saw all these guys could have been something. The injuries came in and John Wall not playing for two seasons. They're like, you know what? We're going to ship them off. We're going to try to build this team around Brad Beal and Kyle Kuzma. We're going to go out and get these guys. But they just killed them. But they're like, okay. They utilized the draft. And Corey Kispert and Denny Avaji and with Brad Beal, Kyle Kuzma, Chris Porzingis. Uh, Will Barn, like they're always just using uh, trades, free agency, uh, the draft, everything. And they're trying really hard. So for them to be in the ninth, I'm happy with that. Ninth in the East, I'm happy. And they're only a half a game behind um, the Hawks. If they make it to seventh, I they don't have to go to the plane. If you make it to six, you don't have to go to the playing tournament. But for right now, they're in the playing tournament, and it's just it's huge news. But I do feel bad for the Wizards, especially for someone that's been keeping tr up and keeping track of the Wizards' history and all these past seasons, all these different head coaches, all these different players, coaching staff being changed, players getting frustrated, players getting excited. It's tough. It takes a mental toll, especially if you're a fan. God bless those fans. They got a hard steal. They just, they just battle through. Can't believe that. But yeah, they're not ready to blow up their roster. I can't blame them. They want to keep their core players together. They made a trade. They they get they got rid of Roy Hachimori. Hachimura. And they got a decent pick from it. They got Kendrick Nunn, whatever. It's not going to help us. It's not going to reshape their future. But... Look, I see why they're making these deals. I see why they're just trying to push. They're trying to stay alive, and they do not want to get rid of Kuzma. They have every intention to re-sign him, to give him the money that he wants. They're trying to make Brad Beal happy. They're trying to keep Christoph Porzingis, unless something huge happens. But they want to keep their core guys. They just want to keep stability on this team. They just want to keep the morale up. And they're going to try to do it by keeping these free intact. So that's where the Wizards are at right now. Ninth in the East. And they're just they're trying to battle. They're just trying to battle. It may not be the easiest, but they're trying to battle. Now, I'm going to shift over real quick. Because I was talking about the Hawks. And this evolves the Hawks. Because of John Collins. And more John Collins news. But another team has been growing in the interest. And in the depth of trading for John Collins. And that's the Pelicans. The Pelicans are very much interested in John Collins as the Hawks want a more balanced team offensively and defensively. 
So that means that they are growing in their motives of trading the forward. It is being said that New Orleans could send more defensive-minded players to Atlanta to Atlanta to meet those demands. So what would that mean for everyone? Well, it would be a win-win. If you want a more balanced team, get more defensive players. Save on some money. You're underutilized. You're not utilizing Collins properly, which is fine, but to a certain extent. But if you really do break this down, there are guys that you could send over there. Um, I got a really good name. You ready? Um, Jackson Hayes, Devontae Graham, and Najee Marshall. They've all been shopped around the league as the Pelicans aren't afraid of them, of trading them. Could one of them or multiple of them be in the, involved in a trade for Collins? Sure. However, no names have been circulating as of yet. Look. So I'm just going to say this real quick. The Hawks aren't bent on trading Collins. They prepared and will embrace the $78.5 million owed to him and keep him on the team for the rest of the season if they can't find a suitable partner. Um, that huge chunk of money is not due until after this season, and it won't and it won't be a free agent until 2026. But this trade line and last trade line, they've been shopping him, and they're ready for him to go. He's being underutilized, and it's being, it's being shown statistically. It's being shown statistically. So... There are pieces that they could get back, like Hayes, Marshall, or Graham. Uh, Graham's a point guard. He has some years left on his deal, some money attached to it. But I don't think money is going to be the problem. I honestly don't think it's going to be the problem. So if you want a big guy like Jackson Hayes, who's more defensive-minded, get him, throw in a draft pick, call today for Collins. Second rounder, Hayes, and Marshall, sure, why not? Because Marshall is not a bad guy. To try to develop and just try to use, right? He's only 25. He came out of the 2020 draft. He's averaging 10 points and 4 assists and 2.6 rebounds assists per game. He's And he's on 25 minutes per game. A huge jump. So, Najee Marshall has been very, very well. Very, very well. Plus 42.6% from the field, which is career high from the field. He's been doing very well. He's been performing very well. So, I can't be upset with him. He's a small forward slash shooting guard. Uh, 220. Yeah, look. He's grown. He's grown and he's adapting. You can't be upset with the guy. He He's coming off of a 34-minute performance. 8 points, 4 of 15 from the field. 4 rebounds, 6 assists. He's more defensive guy, playmaking guy. That's just the honest truth. And he's trying to grow in his role. So that is pretty much it. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. All the trades that could be going down. And John Collins, I do think John Collins is going to be moved. Is going to be moved during or after the draft or right up to the trade line? I honestly do believe that so that's very interesting i keep keep an eye open again of all the podcast episodes that we're gonna be coming out from now to the deadline it's gonna be live so we're gonna have all these developments coming out all of the circulation of news coming out so do not fret we will be on that so while one team is looking for more defensive minded players is one team's franchise player, yes, Kawhi Leonard, superstar, is looking for offensive talent. And you remember our last podcast episode that we did where we said, oh, um, the Clippers could be making Terrence Mann their full-time point guard. Reggie Jackson could be traded for Mike Connolly. All this stuff. All this stuff. So Kawhi Leonard would welcome a newly acquired point guard. Suggestions being Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet, those two being his former teammates when he played on the Raptors for a season when he won another championship. Um, it, was in, it, was on the, it was in the 2019 NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors. That was bittersweet for many people. 
knowing the history we know about Kawhi Leonard, leaving the Raptors for all the best of the habits of the Warriors afterwards, especially with Clay Thompson missing 941 uh, days since hurting his knee. A lot of bad good came out of that uh, finals. One of the craziest finals, too. I think it was like 4-2 Raptors. Yeah, it was pretty much over. Like, we saw the... Back then, many people saw the dynasty of the Warriors were over. And it was for two seasons. And then they were able to bounce back, which is so impressive. So, cruise to that. But anyways, anyways. So, I am going to keep saying that Mike Connolly is going to be a clipper by the time that this deadline is over. By the, de the time that this deadline comes, Mike Connolly will be a clipper. Or there will be a new point guard. And Reggie Jackson is going to be gone. I honestly do believe that. I 100% believe that. No lie. I'm not kidding. There's no joke. I do believe that Kawhi Leonard's going to have a new point guard to play with. And he's. And I'm not saying he's going to become an immediate starter, but for Evan Fleet, uh-oh, I think something's coming up. It's going to lead to my next news, but uh, him or Kyle Lowry, just saying, those aren't two bad guards, and they can do it. They could fill that role. But speaking of Fred Van Vliet and Kawhi Leonard and all this stuff, Fred Van Vliet has finally come out with the terms that he wants on a deal. And he wants a deal that matches the Tower Heroes contract of four years, $130 million. Oh, pardon me. Just like how DeAndre won the same money or close enough to to Michael Porter Jr. when the Nuggets signed to that. Fred Van Vliet wants a deal that matches to Tower Hughes contract. He wants that money of four years, $130 million, Which will pretty much come out to be 32 and a half per season. Which, if you think about it, is a lot of money. Which is a lot, a lot of money. 32 and a half. And we don't know. I don't know if he wants a lot of that guaranteed. He probably does. So, I find that very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. But, I'm just saying. If Fred Van Fleet doesn't get that money. And, they're like, okay. We won't trade from him because he's going to be coming up in free agency soon. Well, just go do it. Just go do it. Why not? If you want Fred VanVleet, do it now or wait. The choice is ultimately yours because you're fine at the point guard position right now. But I don't think I think Kawhi Leonard would be ecstatic. Same with Chris. Uh, same with Paul George. I would one hundred percent believe that. And I'm just gonna make sure about his contract. I got that right, but I'm pretty sure he's coming up soon, 2024. So do we have to wait? So I would do that now. Do a sign trade. Do a sign trade to where the Raptors sign him and, well, Raptors sign him, then trade him to the Clippers. I would do it. I, w I would do it if I'm the Clippers. Try to make that happen. I know you have to give up a lot for Fred Van Vliet, but it would be worth it. Could it push the Clippers to the next level? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to say that I will or won't. But I think it's time that the Clippers have someone that can help them offensively push that ball. But they're fourth in the West right now. So do you really want to push it? Even though this entire Western Conference is so close. Everything just being decided from second all the way to ninth by eight games. Between six to eight games. Which is super crazy. But from like third to ninth, two and a half. Two and a half. So you go from third, from ninth to third, or fourth to eighth, or whatever you want to say it to be, in two and a half games, in two games. Which is super, super crazy if you think about it. Legitimately, if you think about it. But that's where we're at right now with Fred Van Fleet. That is where we're at. And more striking down, brutalizing news. For the Raptors, yes, because we're not done with them. 
even though OJ Nobi is supposed to be staying in the Raptors, there's been this talk that OJ Nobi is no longer content, no longer satisfied, no longer happy in Toronto. There is belief that if the Raptors trade away OJ Nobi, that they could get as many as free first rounders in return for the star studded player. For the good enough player, right? I think that I think they could. I wouldn't say why not. If you're gonna give up four first rounders and a and a few players for Rudy Gobert, why not go for the fir- free first rounders for OJ Anobi? Who's considerably better than Rudy Gobert? Just in my humble opinion. But yeah. Cause OJ Anobi, he's only twenty five. He's a very good basketball player. 17 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, off of 45% from the field. Off of 30 points per off of 36 minutes per game. OJ and OJ's not bad. And you put him on a thriving team and you make him like the center or the Robin to a Batman or Batman to a Robin, but you have like this core group of guys, that could work. Because you know Pascal Siakam. It's going to be getting uh, getting all the love with Fred Van Vliet, right? So, for a minute there, I almost confused Serge Ibaka and Pascal Siak, But no, because you got a lot of guys right now. You got Gary Trent Jr., Chris Bosher, Scoop, uh, Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siak, Fred Van Vliet, Christian Coloco, uh, Otto Porter Jr., even though he's out of injury, Preston Chichala, Achua, Thaddeus Young. You got a lot of young guys. A lot of guys that are going to make a huge impact. Maybe not this season, but next season. I also do believe that. So there is a growing belief that if the Raptors trade away OG and OB, then they, then that means that they can get as many as free first rounders in return, which is unfathomable. Wow. So, real quick, guys, this is all we've been waiting for. I guess it's not really real quick anymore because we're coming to the end of our episode. But whatever. 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 So, coming to the end. It's with the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul, Jay Crowder, the whole thing's coming down. Are you ready? So, I'm going to start with the Suns of Bulls. You can also find all of this information on CourtsHeat.com. Highly recommend it. If you're not going to listen to my beautiful voice, at least hear my voice through the words that I write on CourtsHeat.com, which is so angelic and beautiful. So, both the Suns and the Bulls have had talks surrounding Kobe White for Jay Crowder. Both were on expired contracts. White is eligible to become a restricted free agent, while Crowder is an unrestricted free agent. Come this summer. Why would I bring this up? It, because there was growing suspicion. Like, oh, okay, well, cool. That you, you had teams like you knew the Jay Crowder situation was never going to go away, and that was only going to be heating up the sooner. Soon we got to February into the ninth of February, right? But it was always widely expected that the, that the Suns were going to trade Jay Crowder before the ninth. And it's also widely known that the Hawks and Bucks are going after Crowder. And they've been doing that for months. But now we can add the Bulls to the list of suitors for the veteran. Look. Look. Chicago has, um, just has a buttload. Has a surplus of guards. And they have a need for front court death. Phoenix has suffered many injuries, as we already know, and I've covered this in many podcast episodes. I'm not going to relive it. We're having some positive mojo. Please, I'm not going to jinx us here. I don't need that coming coming back to bite me in the butt. Don't need that. But their backcourt's been banged up throughout this entire season. White would be good in the backcourt. Crowder would be good in the frontcourt. So they've been trying to work for those trades. They've been talking about it a lot. They've been trying to study each other. But I actually like Kobe White. 
I actually like Kobe White a lot. A lot. 22 years old. I get only 8 points, 2 rebounds, and 2 assists. But that's pretty much what Crowder was averaging here. Pretty much. He's a lot younger. He can be molded. But you also got to remember, his production's down severely. I don't know why he's taking a dip. He's just been up and down this season. I think that they're just underutilizing him. I hope, especially if the Phoenix Suns are going to trade for him. Because he was average. Again, his men's are down. Last season was 27.5. This season only 21.2. Last season, 12 points. There's a six-minute difference, which allows him to have less points. It also had a decrease in assist, rebounds, and field goal percentage. Points, everything. So you're not going to have those great results. But his but his meds were always fluctuating. It always were. But I like Kobe White. I think Kobe White would be a great addition to the Phoenix Suns. I'm not saying he's going to give us this unlimited talent that's going to push us to the finals or past the breaking point of many teams. All I'm saying is that he will be a great, great, great addition that could help us in the backcourt. He would give us great depth. Then death is what we need right now, especially in the midst of all these injuries. And with that being said, involving Jay Crowder, per Zach Lowe, the Phoenix Suns wants two of three things to come return to them for Jay Crowder. A first round pick, a good young player, a saw rotation player. A good young player would be uh would be Kobe White, but now who would be a solid rotation player? Who would be on the Bulls? And who would the Bulls want to give up? That is the key. Because would they want to give up a first rounder? Well, maybe a first rounder and Kobe White. Or maybe you want to go to the player and player. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. Kobe White and. Uh, wow, they really have no one else. I, I don't think we would want another point guard. Would, would, would we want a uh, Goran Dragic? I pray that we don't. He's 36 years old. He's old. I wouldn't want Andre Drummond. They're not trying Aho. They're not trading Patrick Williams. Well, would they? But no, they would not trade a 21 year old who they've been trying to mold into their own since 2020 for Jay Crowder, who's going to retire in a few years, anyways. I think their best bet is to do the pick and Kobe White. And then you ask for a like, 2028 first rounder or something. I don't know. I'm going to have to sit through that. Because knowing their demands and knowing they want two thirds of those things in return for Jay Crowder. And Jay Crowder's an expiring player. So you're going to have to lock him up. You're going to have to lock him up. Right? So. I get both those guys are going to be heading the free agency market. But, you got to remember this summer, one's a restricted free agent, one's an unrestricted free agent. That's very key. You can only put in offers for a restricted free agent, not for an unrestricted free agent. For an unrestricted free agent, you can go wherever he wants. And the team can have a final say. They can't put in, in the offer or match the offer the opposing team puts in. That's just a fact. Trust me, I've learned a lot about that, especially during the DeAndre and... Um, situation last season. Now, here's something very interesting. Let's say, okay, Jay Crowder's situation is handled or unhandled. Who well, let's just say that it's all situated. Let's just say, okay, this is happening. Right? It's just reel it back in. Everything is kumbaya. We're all fine. Peace amongst Everyone, right? Right? No one's going to dispute that, right? Well, um, Chris Paul. While the Suns are unlikely to trade away Chris Paul, other executives are monitoring the situation to see if his time is up in Phoenix after this season. His stay could be overwelcomed. His welcome could be over. They could be ready to move on from him. He is going to be... He's up there in age right now. 
Chris Paul, isn't he on like an expiring contract now or does he still have one season off? Hold on. Hold on, let me check. I, I may never be able to find a contract. I, I don't care about his wife. I just want to find his contract. But no. So Chris Paul is going to be a free agent in 2025. Okay, guys. Remember that huge extension? I'm, I'm going to say something. No one get mad at me. What if other executives are waiting for the Phoenix Suns to fail this season? Get booed like get the first or second round. They blow up this entire team. Chris Paul is no longer feeling it. They both mutually agreed to find a trade. They find a trade and it satisfies the monitoring of these other executives. Because they never said for this season. They never said, like, oh, they want to see something short term. No, they're playing the long term. But I love Chris Paul. I would hate to see him leave the Valley. He's done so many good things for us. And sure, he's 37, but he's still dropping 31 points. Just like he did to the Spurs. Right? So, gotta remember who Chris Paul is, first and foremost. Gotta remember, he's coming off of a 31 point game, a 22 point game, 11 assist game, 10 assist game, 11 assist game, 11 6 game. He is thriving. He just is. I love Chris Paul. It's what he does. And I'm okay to lose out injured. Yes, would have been better for him to return, even though he couldn't. Look, the rest will always help a 37-year-old. Look, that's some serious load management, and he's got a rest, and now he's firing on all cylinders. And now, Pierre was able to sit out like 19, 20, some odd games, 20-plus games, whatever it was, but a good handful of games. And he was able to say, you know what? I, yes, are the Suns a little bit off right now? Yes, are we in the play tournament? But I'm resting. I can help this team, especially when there's our injuries. And that is huge. So, I don't see the sun is turning away, Curse Paul. But other executives are monitoring the situation to see if his time is up in Phoenix after the season. I don't think so. Unless something drastically happens. Unless this team cannot reach the first round. And they want to blow it up. And they're like, we have to get a younger point guard. But I love Chris Paul. I don't want Chris Paul to leave. I would actually cry. Um... Probably taking that to extreme, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I I don't see Chris Paul being traded. They're just monitoring. Did I hype this up a little too much to put a scare factor onto y'all? Maybe, but that's what I do. Anyways, that's all I got. There is legitimately nothing left for today's episode. Tomorrow will be the same, right? Nothing too crazy. Nothing crazy at all. Um, podcast schedule is going to be running the same for today and tomorrow. Then, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, leading all the way up to February 9th. Podcast episode after podcast episode after podcast episode. You're going to have 10 straight days. So this way you don't miss any of the action. So... Please tune in, please subscribe, please, please, please share this with your family, friends, co-workers, strangers, you meet on the side of the road after you bump into them. Very, very odd. I, I know, I get it. Don't hate me. But yeah, come on, get in the mood for this. This is the trade on. You do not want to be out of the loop for this. And guys, with that being said, you know where to find me. You know where to find Courts of Heat on YouTube. SoundCloud, um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, all the other podcast streaming platforms. Oh, everybody, you know where to find me on social media. That is easy. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, if you still have it for fun. But guys, that is it. This is all I have for today. More live streams will be coming out. Those dates will be announced. I have 10 more days of this. This is going to kill my voice, but I do not care. I am ready to go. I am getting pumped up. And guys, if you want to see these breakdowns and all and during the All-Star Week about the teams, 
just let me know. I am happy to give that to y'all. I said I'm just going to do it anyways. But guys, this is what we got. A lot of drama, a lot of chaos, a lot of excitement, a lot of depression, a lot of frustration, a lot of anxiety. This is playoffs. Almost. This is the trade line. And we are gearing up for it all. I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a great day. And we're just kicking off our week now. This is a trade on, baby. And we're not slowing down. I'll see y'all on social media. Remember to subscribe. Y'all know what to do. Peace out.